Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, tonight's presentation uh, about uh, business finance and economics uh, at uh, Hayworth Heath and Worthing College. We uh, are waiting for um, quite a few uh, uh, attendees tonight, so we're going to give it a little bit of time so people can to connect uh, and then we'll get, uh, uh, get going. Uh, we're about a third of the way there at the moment, so people are joining us all the time. So just keeping an eye, an eye on that. Once we get to a, a critical mass, we will uh, uh, start with the presentation. Okay, so we're about halfway there. It's growing all the time. Okay, so I think we're just about uh, uh, just about there. So as I said, welcome to uh, uh, the presentation for business finance and economics uh, for Hayward Heath and Worthing. Um, as we go through the presentation, you might get uh, uh, think of questions uh, that you'd like to ask. Uh, please put them in the Q and A uh, section uh, that which you'll find on the screen. If they're general questions, then uh, that's great. If they're specific to Haywards, Heath or Worthing, if you could put that in the title, then that will help us uh, answer them and we'll be answering them as we go along and also uh, when we get towards the end. Um, the whole presentation will be recorded so that uh, uh, you'll have access to it to look at it uh, uh, again, should you, uh, uh, should you wish. Um, if you have any technical difficulties, there is a chat function as well, which you'll see at the bottom and you can um, put your uh, problem in the chat and uh, uh, the uh, support team will try, try and help you out. Um, so uh, we shall uh, uh, get, get, get going. So next slide, please. OK, so uh, as we go through the presentation, you will uh, uh, get to know uh, about the different courses. OK, and uh, you're going to find that there is lots of information about A-levels and applied generals. So those are the two uh, method, sort of different types of courses that we offer. Uh, they're all level three. Uh, there will be a, um, um, some information about level two as well, but the A-levels and applied generals are all level, all level three. They're equivalent to each other. The key thing that you need to uh, uh, understand and listen to is uh, how they are assessed, because those are the key key differences. A levels focus on uh, uh, end of two year uh, end of two year exams. Applied generals have exams, um, but there is a significant amount of coursework. So it depends on how you want to learn and how you want to be assessed as to which is uh, the most appropriate course uh, for yourself. Okay, um, so that's one of the main emphasis. Um, before I pass you on to uh, uh, Tom from Haywards Heath, uh, I'd just like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Colin Ilsley and I'm uh, Head of Learning for uh, at Worthing College and one of my areas that I'm, I proudly uh, support is uh, the business finance and economics here. So we're joined by staff from Haywards Heath and Worthing and they'll introduce themselves uh, as they go through the presentations. So I'm gonna pass you on to Tom, uh, uh, who is at Haywards Heath. Next slide, please. Hi everyone, my name's Tom Verndal and I'm the uh, business and ex economics teacher at Haywards Heath College. And I'm gonna talk to you about uh, A-level business. Um, so A-level business is a fantastic subject um, because you know it's, it's a live subject, it's a living subject. So. Um, we're always looking at news stories and we're looking at uh, real businesses and real life case histories and that kind of thing. So it's a really uh, great subject to study um, because things are always changing and we can always kind of relate uh, what we study in the course to the real world. Um, the minimum entry requirements you need for business are you need five GCSEs um, at nine to four, including uh, grade four in English language and maths. Um, maths and English are key for the course because there are um, essays that you have to write in the exams and also you'll need some uh, strong numeracy skills and math skills throughout the course so that's also important. Uh, the course is split into four themes so we have um, the themes on the slide marketing and people then managing businesses business activities uh, business decisions and strategy and global business 
Um, so at the moment, we're looking at theme one, marketing and people. And then as we progress through the course, we look at those uh, different themes. OK, uh, next slide, please. So in terms of the lesson delivery and the type of activities we do in lessons, um, there are lots of different uh, teaching and learning styles in lessons. Um, so we have discussions um, and debates. There are presentations from students. So they're working groups to present um, different themes and different topics to the class. We have role play activities. Uh, we look at a lot of case studies because that links to um, the exams. Um, we have some task based learning. So individual learning um, videos, research tasks, lots of different activities. So activities that sort uh, that suits different learning styles, whether that's working individually or in a group. Um, next slide, please. Um, so where this course could lead you. Um, uh, because we're talking about an A-level, obviously, to higher education, so um, university to study business again or economics or another course related, such as marketing or finance. Um, there are also apprenticeship routes that students can go into. So if they're looking to, to move into that route, and I have a number of students um, that I'm studying, uh, sorry, that are studying at the moment that are looking to go um, that route uh, into apprenticeships. Um, or it could help you to set up your own business. Um, so there are a number of different um, vocational and academic routes that students can take uh, after A-level. Um, next slide, please. Um, so I'm gonna leave you uh, with the student voice. So um, some of these uh, quotes from students. Um, and what I would say is the kind of underlying parts of those quotes are really important. And that, that's what students um, talk about at the moment. That's what they tell me they like about the course. So the fact that it kind of relates to society and you have real, real world application and it can kind of make you think um, about the, the working world. So, um, yeah, that's um, what I have to say about A-level business. A great subject, a great subject if you want to, to learn about the wider business world and, and make those connections um, with the world. So I will now pass you on uh, to Annalie at Worthing, who's going to talk to you about economics. Right, so next slide, please. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Annalie Wixon, and I teach business and economics at Worthing College. Uh, I'm very excited to speak to you about economics. I do think that not many subjects are more topical than economics at the moment. Obviously, with Corona and the economic impact that this will have, as well as obviously uh, Brexit and the new sort of rule book that we will have in place come 1st of January. So economics A level then, we have a minimum entry requirement uh, alongside all the other level three subjects. You need your nine to four grades in, uh, well, five of those nine to five uh, nine to four grades, sorry, in uh, your GCSEs, including a grade four in English language. Now you will be writing essays from the start. You need to be able to master analysis as well as evaluation. And therefore a good grade in English language will give you sort of a head start. You also need a grade five in maths. Uh, you do need to have a liking for maths and enjoy maths. Uh, you are going to be drawing diagrams, interpreting diagrams, perform calculations and uh, also do um, sort of analysis of data. We studied two main parts in economics. We have got microeconomics that comes through in both year one and year two. Uh, microeconomics, now micro means small as we look at individual markets, for example, the market for oil or the market for, for housing. And we look at how the different economic agents interact within the economy uh, to create sort of um, to create uh, the, the interrelationships in that market itself. We look as well at the distribution of wealth and income, and we look at what the government is doing to try to steer a, a particular market on its track and we make judgments around how well that is working. We also look at macroeconomics, and this is where I think that economics is a life skill. Uh, I say to all my economists, when you come out of this course, you will be able to pick up a newspaper, follow the news, and really understand what they are talking about. We will be looking at the national economy, uh, as well as in the context of the global economy. We'll be looking at things like GDP growth, unemployment rates, interest rates, uh, the balance of payment, et cetera, and exports and so on. And it's a really important um, sort of life skill to learn, to understand what's going on around us. Next slide, please. So the lessons, just like business studies, uh, there's a range of teaching and learning methods that we use, both the traditional sort of uh, teaching methods, 
uh, I always start every year with a debate uh, to get students going. So uh, that set the precedence for the rest of the year, loads of discussions and debates. Today, we did a very practical lesson uh, around specialization. We also might have external speakers coming in. Uh, we do loads of research, working on essays and so on and so forth. Thank you. Next slide, please. So where did this course take you? It is an A-level. Uh, and it's a very sort of academic A level. Many of my students do go on to study at university. They might go into banking and finance. Uh, accounting is a very, very uh, popular career for students. And we do also have every year quite a few students that go on straight to do an apprenticeship in accounting. Um, but that's what this would normally take you to. Next slide, please. So again, we've got some student voices here. These are current students here at the college at the moment. And this is what they are saying about economics. So I'll leave you with that before I'm gonna pass you on to my colleague, Nikki, to talk to you about finance. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, good evening. Yes, my name's Nikki Rogerson and I teach uh, business and finance here at Worthing College. Um, the certificate in finance is a standalone qualification worth half an A-level. However, most students progress onto the second year of the course to study the diploma in finance and achieve a full A-level equivalent. So it's an applied general qualification offered by the London Institute of Banking and Finance, uh, which is an organisation, very old organisation based in London. Um, and their um, aim is to get financial skills to to everybody really um, so the minimum entry requirements are five gcses at nine to four including a grade four in english and maths so when we get on to talking about how the course is assessed uh be able to explain a little bit more about those um those grades um, so what will you study so it's all about developing personal financial capability, really that underpin uh, clear decisions about being able to manage your money, understand and be prepared for, for events throughout your life. So we look at different stages in the life cycle because it's, it's really important if you're 15, 16 year old really to understand uh, you know, what mum and dad are uh, experiencing as they get older or grandparents, um, you know, the importance of pensions and managing your money and budgeting, staying out, staying clear of debt. So being able to apply those different events and uh, to product ranges. And um, I do say to students in quite all honesty um, that I will make them wealthier over their lifetime because they'll be able to deal with financial problems and be able to make really good financial choices because they'll understand the different situations and events that happen over over somebody's lifetime so to sort of deal with some of the problems like not having enough income to buy all the things we need is always a, an issue um, and also that life expectancy is rising above the age of 80 and also uh, the different ways of banking we need to be smart we need to be informed co consumers of, of, of product pr product ranges we need to be good at technology Sometimes people aren't good at handling money, so they, we need to learn how to stay out of debt. And also very much linking to economics, um, how the state of the economy impacts on our personal finances. You know, very, very topical at the moment. So in the first year, the certificate, um, unit one and unit two, dealing with money management in the short, medium and long term. In the second year, looking at external factors, learning more about um, uh, you know, how the financial providers operate. Okay, next slide, please. So uh, finance lessons are, you know, very lively. They're very much activity based, uh, very topical. So students are encouraged to research and apply current issues. Um, so they download BBC News app. So everything that we do also that they, they can talk to you at home. They can talk to parents. They can, which is really uh, important to be able to revise and talk to, to parents and family members and friends. So there's lots of role plays, case studies. Um, I like to get external speakers in from financial organizations and there's lo lots of research. So it's very lively. It's very engaging, very, very active. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, just reverting back to the assessment. So there is no coursework, although this is a applied general um, 
There is no coursework. So all assessments are a combination of multiple choice through online tests. So students sit in e-test, they sit 35 multiple choice questions. Um, you know, they're not easy. Uh, so they have to, we have to do lots of preparation for those, lots of knowledge based questions. And then there are uh, case studies, pre-release case studies uh, released about eight weeks before the exams, which the written questions um, are based on so that students can understand different case studies, so scenarios, somebody's situation. So there's a really strong emphasis on developing written skills, not much maths at all, so it's really not a strongly maths based, so, so percentages, percentage changes, looking at interest rates, inflation, those sort of economic indicators. Um, but we're very strong in developing your written skills. Um, so and it's assessed at four points during the year from from january to june so the diploma and the certificate sit different units but at the same time okay next slide please so where could finance lead you so it stands you in really really good stead for a career in financial services or accountancy or banking so lots of our students go on to perhaps gain apprenticeships at local accounting companies or they go on to study uh, degrees in uh, banking, accounting, finance, or business management. So it's really, really useful life skill as well. Um, so it gives you a strong grounding. The LIBF, the uh, course provider, have their own university in the city of London, right in the heart of the financial district, uh, which you could study to do more specific banking and investment degrees. Um, so it could help you with apprenticeships or setting up your own business or employment. You know, you're going to be in the workplace for the next 40 or 50 years. So it's really, really important that you gain an understanding of how to make the most out of the, the money that, that you're going to be making over the next sort of 40, 50 years or for the rest of your life. OK, so the, the last slide, please. Um, it's just a, a little flavouring of, um, I asked my this year's students, these are second year students, so um, I'll just, just let you, give you a few seconds just to absorb those. And then we can move on to the next slide, please. Thank you, Nikki. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Sue. I teach at Worthing College um, in the business section. And I'm going to talk to you um, briefly um, about the applied generals. And then I'm going to pass over to my colleague, Billy, at Haywards Heath, who will talk in a bit more depth about one of the qualifications that you can see here. So um, applied generals, as uh, Colin has already said, are <clears throat> equivalent to the A-levels, but we have a family of them here um, at the college. So as you can see on the screen, we've got the business certificate, which is a one year course that is equivalent to one AS, that's half an A-level. We also have the extended certificate, which is uh, a one or two years. So in the first year, that's the equivalent of uh, one A level. And then you move on into the second year with the business diploma that um, will give you the equivalent of your second A level. And we also have um, the level two business here at Worthing. Um, which I will talk to you about a little bit more in a moment. But first, I'm going to uh, hand over to Billy at Hayward Heath, who's going to give you a bit more of a flavour of how um, our Applied Generals work in lessons. Billy, next slide, please. Good evening, everyone. My name is Billy Barrington. I'm a teacher of uh, Cambridge Technicals um, Business at Hayward Heath. So, this is, uh, these are the units that uh, those studying on diploma, which is the equivalent of two A-levels, uh, will have to do if they choose uh, business. Um, so the diploma uh, is about 66% coursework, 33% exam, as you can see in front of you. Uh, the exams are a mixture of multiple choice and some longer form answers, often, um, scenario based so they will set up a scenario of 
a local business and you have to answer questions in response to that within the exam. Um, if you are interested in the extended certificate over the two years, which is a 1A level equivalent, the units that you see on the left hand side in year one, that's the units that you would do if you were doing the extended certificate. We also then have a lot of coursework, as I said, 66% of the diploma is assessed through coursework, which again um, is, uh, is vocational. So they're actually doing um, a lot of the things you see in front of you. So marketing, uh, they will actually produce a marketing campaign. They will do market research. Uh, for customers com and communication at the moment, we are working towards them delivering presentations um, so this is all real um, life stuff that is then assessed and they're graded on and that goes towards their final overall grade. Uh, if you go on to the next slide, we can talk in a little bit more detail about the sorts of things that are done in class. So as I mentioned earlier, each unit has a business vocational context scenario. So at the moment, um, I'm doing a unit about marketing and market research with some of my students that's focused on a local firm that does uh, home cooked food delivered to people, obviously very apt at the moment. Um, within the lessons themselves, there's all sorts of different learning styles going on. So obviously there will be presentations from both teachers and students. Uh, we had a lesson just the other day where students had to uh, do role play based on different character types. And then there was a bit of a game guessing what sort of uh, customer they were uh, what age range they were, what uh, background they come from, how much money they earn, and things like that, which students uh, had a lot of fun with. There's a lot of interaction with local businesses. We've got our first guest speaker at, at Haywards Heath uh, coming in. We've got a few booked in over the next few weeks who are um, video calling into the students. Um, and then, as it says, assignment-based learning. So a lot of coursework, uh, students are being assessed as they go throughout the course. So that's that difference to A-level. They are being assessed throughout their time on their two-year course. There is indeed video evidence, as it says. Um, so again, we're dealing with role plays, can be used as evidence and presentations. And it's also important to note, as it says on the right, that work experience is a requirement of the business extended cert and diploma. Obviously, at this year, um, that's probably unable to happen. But going forward, and hopefully as things return to normal, that becomes an absolutely essential part of the course. And that is usually done for a week towards the end of year 12. Okay, so that's the CTEC Business Extended Certificate and Diploma. Uh, so I'm gonna pass you back over to Sue. And next slide, please. Thank you, Billy. So um, as I said, um, here at Worthing, we also, also offer the path for level two business. And as you can see, we have very similar topic areas um, to the level three um, applied generals. Um, two of these uh, units, that's the finance and the marketing are externally assessed units. So they go off to the exam board and six of the uh, units here are coursework units. Next slide, please. So the business two lessons are very, very similar to the uh, level three lessons um, in shape and format. We do try to get quite creative um, to help the level two students to access the examination units. For example, we make up um, board games to help them to revise. And in another core coursework unit, um, we've made up our own small business ideas and they work their way through a unit with the various things that you can see there, group work, role play. Um, we get some video evidence together um, to help them through each of their units. Um, again, work experience um, is a core part of uh, these applied generals and level two and we've had many students in the past who have been very successful on their work experience and have gained themselves part-time jobs so we look forward to the return next slide please 
So um, in terms of how the work will be assessed, again, very similar to the level three units. So as you can see at the top there, um, including level two and the different package that we have with regards to the applied generals level three, they're all assessed in very similar ways. So the coursework units are assessed internally by us, the teachers, and each unit will be graded when they finish a unit with a pass merit or distinction grade. And the exam units are assessed obviously externally by the examination board, but then that will still come back for the students with a pass merit distinction grade. And as it says here, finally on the side, this is really useful for the students studying on any of the applied general packages here, because as they're going through their course, they can start to see the overall picture of what their final grade will be. And many students um, find that really helpful. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so where could level two lead you? As you can see, very similar to level three and A levels. So they can go into the employment sector, um, very popular with level two course. Um, many of the students go on to do apprenticeships. Um, believe it or not, many of my students have gone on and are currently running their own businesses. So that's fantastic. And I think what's really important with the level two and worth remembering is it's a gateway and a pathway to get from level two onto a level three course if you wish to continue at the college. So um, thank you very much. I'm now going to hand back over to Colin, who will look at uh, some of the enrichment of our courses. Next slide, please. So uh, as you've uh, already uh, heard about, um, these subjects are very real, real life uh, and there's a real connection to uh, uh, the real world. So consequently, we try and provide as many opportunities as we can to uh, embed work experience and business and economics uh, uh, experiences within the uh, curriculum. So uh, we've got some examples there of uh, some of the things that, uh, that we do, uh, including visits to uh, uh, the Bank of England and the C City of London. Uh, we are always looking for opportunities to engage with uh, different types of businesses, whether they're small or, or local, and that might mean uh, visits or it might be that uh, we get uh, uh, guest uh, uh, speakers in. As uh, Billy alluded to, uh, we are uh, looking at more of the remote model because obviously some of these uh, uh, opportunities are no longer or currently not, not available due to uh, um, uh, COVID. So we are looking to uh, uh, adapt and, and respond. Um, and one of the ways that uh, we can do that is that obviously being part of a, a wider group of colleges, we've got uh, human resources teams, we've got marketing teams, uh, and uh, we can use and tap into those, those experiences to bring that into the classroom as well. So uh, we look at lots of different uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, each year we have a, uh, the, the Institute of Chartered Accountants come and do seminars uh, with, our, with our students. Uh, and a big focus of those is to develop uh, uh, job skills, employability skills, understand what the marketplace is going to be like for uh, uh, students. So enrichment is a big part of the business, uh, economics and fi finance uh, program. Uh, and even though uh, we've obviously been impacted upon by, by COVID, we are still embedding that to uh, uh, enrich the, uh, uh, the, the courses. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, there's a, a couple of questions here, which are the, uh, uh, the, the standard questions that uh, uh, students often like, like to get clarified. Uh, so how are applied generals different to A-levels? So hopefully you've uh, got that information now in terms of uh, A-levels being ex assessed at the end of two years, uh, whilst the applied generals have, have exams in, embedded within them, but there is coursework uh, and therefore assessed on an ongoing basis. The applied generals also have, um, at the end of the first year, will have a qualification that students can, can gain. 
Uh, and the second question is, is, is an important one too. Uh, for those students that are looking to go to uh, university, the applied general qualifications are accepted just as much as uh, A-levels, a they're, they're equivalents and therefore uh, um, they are uh, exactly, exactly the same. Um, and if you are to look at different universities, you'll often find that the, the universities won't necessarily specify what uh, actual uh, A-levels or applied generals you need. Uh, often it's around UCAS points, and that's uh, uh, an important point to remember when you are considering which course you want to choose, whether it's A-level or applied general, because obviously you want to maximise the opportunity to get your uh, UCAS points. Uh, and therefore it might be that you might be uh, might consider that applied generals might offer you a greater opportunity to uh, achieve UCAS points than, than a level so you have to uh, quite a lot to uh, uh, weigh up but uh, applied generals are uh, very much uh, um, accepted by by universities um, so we, we, we have come to, to uh, the end um, so there have been some really good questions that people have uh, uh, asked um, and we've been answering them, them, them all uh, as, we've, as we've gone along. They will be available also to uh, uh, look at uh, uh, late, later as well. Um, and of course, we've got the prospectus and we've got the uh, website where you can find additional information, not only about the uh, uh, courses, but also about the wider uh, colleges of Worthing and Haywards Heath. So uh, you can find that information there. So. We've got uh, one last question that uh, is there an option to change change courses? OK, so the application process is open now and if students would uh, and we're encouraging people to apply early. Um, if you apply before Chris Christmas, you're guaranteed your first first choice courses. Um, if you apply after that, generally you will get your first uh, cho choice courses. Um, uh, but uh, the question was about changing. So students change their mind all, you know, all the time and that's, uh, that's not a, uh, a problem as they go through the process. So uh, we will uh, uh, be more than happy to entertain discussions with students that want to change their mind during the application process. Some of the uh, some students may or may not, not get entry requirements and therefore when, once the GCSE results come out and therefore uh, at that stage there is a uh, an opportunity to consider course changes as well. Um, so we try and support students as they go through the process, because um, as I said, they change their mind. There are other things that might get in the uh, um, in the way, such as uh, uh, not achieving grades or even uh, uh, achieving grades. Uh, and therefore act, wanting to access a course. So we do try and support people all the way along the process uh, until we start in September. Um, okay, so uh, this is a, a question for uh, Anne, perhaps. Uh, how much role play and presentation will there be? So this is uh, probably uh, to do with the, the CamTech. Yes, I was just answering that, actually uh, writing that one. Um, there's no set amount for amount of role play that we use, and we use it in A-level and the CamTech courses. It really depends on what we're trying to get you to develop in the class. And I was just sort of reassuring um, the student in question asking the, uh, who's asking, if, the, if it's uh, an issue, if you don't want to take part, then it's absolutely fine. Just let the teacher know and, and we can um, not, we won't force you, we won't make you. Um, but just we do ask you to get involved in the class, in class discussions and in small group discussions, even in COVID times, we can still talk to each other. And that's really to get you to form analysis. So you need to have an opinion. You need to be able to give reasonings for your opinion um, so that we can see how you're learning and, and push you a little bit. But no requirements at all for role play and presentations. We, we just use that as a way of, of learning. OK, thank you, Colin. OK, um, there's a good, just a good question from uh, Jacob, again, coming back to UCAS points. Uh, an applied general course is, uh, is uh, assessed pass merit, distinction, distinction star. A level is uh, E, D, C, B, A and A star. If you uh, achieve uh, a distinction star in your applied general, that, it, that equates to the same points as an A star in an A level. So you uh, somewhat need to decide 
how you might what's the best way for you to learn because if you can work out the best way for you to learn you can obviously work out which course is then most suitable whether it's an applied general or, or the a level uh, and obviously the the one that's most suitable is likely to give you the best results and therefore the best U, ucas uh, uh, grades um, got another question about uh, I got all eights and nines at GCSE. Can I do four A levels? Uh, first of all, congratulations. That's a great set of results. Um, yes, you can do four, four A levels. Uh, the uh, uh, what we require is students to be on three. Uh, or their equivalents. Um, so students coming in with that type of profile, we would have a discussion with you about um, uh, four, uh, what might those four be? Uh, what might there be some alternatives if you decide to take three because we've got things like the Aspire program that might be more suitable. So that would, uh, so yes, it's a possibility, but it would uh, uh, be something that we would uh, uh, discuss. Okay. So the, the grades for the apply, Business Applied General uh, are on the PowerPoint. Um, and uh, Anne, if you, if you got that, it's uh, five, five, four to nines. That's correct, yep. Okay, so five, four to nines for the Business Applied uh, General. Um, any, any other questions? Okay, well, thank you ever so much for, for, for your time. There's no more questions coming through. We've, we've, we've answered everything that's come, come our way. As I said, uh, you'll have another opportunity to ask questions when it comes to uh, uh, your course guidance meeting, which is once you've applied, uh, you've got um, obviously the, uh, the website, the prospectus, uh, to look for more information, but hopefully we've uh, given you some insight into uh, uh, Hayward, Heath and Worthing uh, and the business finance and economics uh, areas. So have a good evening and uh, we hope to uh, speak to you and see you soon. Many thanks. Bye bye.